Casual fans wouldn't know too much about them, but I'm predicting these eight NBA players will break out to become household names in 2021-22. You're about to meet the next wave of basketball stars. Before continuing, over three quarters of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed, so if you fall into that percentage, help the channel get to 50k by subscribing. Also, leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Michael Porter Jr. is one of the most intriguing young players on the come up in the NBA. Not too long ago, he was the number one ranked player after his senior year of high school. Now, Michael's counted on as the Denver Nuggets' third scoring option. MPJ's a damn solid scorer already. He shot an excellent 46.8% on spot up three pointers. He's also a fundamentally sound pull up jump shooter. He increased his points per game by 10 in his sophomore season, and given the Nuggets won't have Jamal Murray for the entire year, Porter Jr. will have a lot more opportunity in 2022. Look for him to average around 23 to 25 points per game in his fourth season. It's starting to look like a steal that the Nuggets got this man down at pick number 14 in 2018's draft. Keldon Johnson wasn't just on Team USA because his coach is Greg Popovich. I mean, it certainly helped, but it's only a matter of time before Keldon's a star in this league. In the final exhibition game against Spain, the young improved he deserved to make the national team. In a win, Johnson scored 15 points on 7 for 9 shooting, showing off only a bit of what he did with the San Antonio Spurs in 2021. They call him the Mustang because he's a 6 foot 5, 225 pound athletic phenom. The powerful pure slasher is so difficult to guard. His explosiveness, combined with the fact that he's flashed dominance with his three point shot, forced defenders to pick their poison. It'll be Keldon's third pro season next year. Look for an 18 to 20 point per game year from the guy. Johnson also doubled his rebounding stats in his sophomore campaign. Now with DeRozan moving on, the pressure's on KJ to bring his game to the next level. Having said that, the mentorship that DeMar provided to Keldon was invaluable. Johnson made the rising stars team, but all around, he's incredibly underrated. Hoop fans in the Big Apple are praying for their shooting guard RJ Barrett to take the all-star step. Since being the third overall pick in 2019, the Torontonians' first two seasons have been impressive. Specifically, his sophomore season was noteworthy. RJ averaged 17.6 points per game on 44% shooting from the floor and 40% shooting from distance. Barrett became just the eighth player in NBA history to reach 2,000 points, 500 rebounds, and 300 assists before turning 21, joining seven other legendary players. In year two, Barrett developed in every aspect. His ability to finish through contact vamped, his one-on-one -on -one defense got a lot better. Now, RJ needs to improve his mid-range game as he only shot 36% from that area of the floor. If he does that, New York basketball has a star on their hands. Dear Nuggets coach Mike Malone, it's time to play my guy, Bull Bull. If you can't do that, I'm making a petition to get this man out of Denver. I'm mostly kidding around, but Bull should have been in the rotation for a year or two at this point, and Malone's never given the man a fair shot. And in my opinion, that's been a massive mistake from Denver's man in charge. The fact that he sat a 7'2 ball handler with unlimited potential at the end of the bench for the last two seasons is blasphemous. And I don't want to hear it's because they have Jokic or that Bull's too skinny. The Nuggets brought in JaVale McGee at the deadline instead of playing Bull, which is ridiculous in itself. But my main point is, if Bull could have found a rhythm in the rotation, backing up the Joker, his game is tough to stop, I think he would have thrived. His freakish 7-8 wingspan and solid lateral quickness makes up for his lack of strength and experience. Bull had 26 points and 9 rebounds in his summer league debut this year. To me, it's a joke that Malone has yet to give him a fair shot. If he finally does, I think Bull breaks out. You have Popeyes in? Yeah, man. I had Popeyes after the game. In the similar spots beside you in the table. Where are you from, Jim? Ireland. I like your accent. It's just tough. Oh. Any, okay, ping pong, baseball, football, basketball. Tennis, swimming. 
lacrosse, whatever you need me to play, I'm going to go do it. If it's some money on the line, I'm going to go do it. Can you go? Whatever you need me to do. Okay. Hockey. Whatever. On the, on the ring. Whatever you need me to do. Likely the most well-known player on this list, given he was the number one pick in 2020's draft and the runner-up for Rookie of the Year, Anthony Edwards is looking to explode onto the scene in 2022. Anthony's humorous and bold personality is built for superstardom. Between the lines, he's instantly gained the reputation of a top dunker. Now all the 21-year-old Georgia product needs is to polish his skills on the perimeter. I'm predicting Ant does just that and joins D'Lo and Cat as one of the three elite bucket getters on the T-Wolves. The only thing stopping Minnesota from finally being good again next year is Russell getting injured and Edwards having a sophomore slump. If luck swings their way, look for the T-Wolves to hunt down a 2022 playoff spot. The Detroit Pistons number 19 pick from last year's draft had a stellar rookie season. Sadiq Bey finished the year with 175 made three-pointers, which is a franchise record for a rookie, and the third highest total by a rookie in league history. Mind you, this season was shortened by 10 games, so there's certainly an alternate universe out there where he snaps that record. Donovan Mitchell's 187 threes made ranks highest. Sadiq hit four or more three-pointers 21 times last year, but it wasn't just the amount of threes that Bay hit, it was how efficient he was while shooting them and the ways in which he found daylight for that shot. He shot a remarkable 40.2% on catch-and-shoot threes, and those looks accounted for 54% of his total shots last year. At 6'7", with a lightning-quick release, Bay's sophomore season should see him establish himself as one of the better up-and-coming wing players in basketball. Coming off an appearance for Japan at the Olympics, DC small forward Rui Hachimura now enters his third pro season. Three and D talents on the perimeter are crucial to have in today's NBA. Following the point guard era, we're now in the era of the small ball four. Giannis, KD, LeBron, Jimmy Butler, and Kawhi have paved the way for a plethora of skilled, sizable wing players to ascend from the ashes. Zion and Ingram in New Orleans, Pascal Siakam in Toronto, Julius Randle in New York are a few small ball fours on the come up. Then there's the last two players listed in this video. Rui Hachimura of the Washington Wizards has as much upside of any of those young players. I forgot to mention Evan Mobley who's coming into the league is one of those guys. To be fair, he's more of a five, but to maximize Rui's potential, he's got to shoot better than 32% from three-point range, but I see him increasing his scoring to around 15 to 17 points per game and also becoming the defender that Washington drafted him to be. The paw Patrick Williams flashed elite defensive upside in his rookie year. Williams already has a nifty mid-range game, an effective three-point shot, and a smart ability to score off cuts. Billy Donovan had Williams run the occasional pick and roll, and he didn't totally flounder. But the skill set is there for Williams to be very impactful. It was surprising when the Bulls took him fourth overall last year, given he was ranked down as the 13th best prospect in 2020's draft. But the Bulls realized the modern NBA is starting to revolve around six foot seven to six foot nine wing players. He put up a 30-piece in Summer League, displaying that his three-point shot is way more polished than it was in his rookie year. Once the season starts, he should benefit with Lonzo Ball running the Bulls' offense. With the moves and footwork Williams is pulling off in the post, if you're looking to call someone the next Kawhi Leonard, he could be your guy. Pat clearly put in an absurd amount of off-season reps because the 19-year-old looks ready to elevate big time in year two. Who will break out the most in your opinion? Hope you have a great day. DFlow signing off.